Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Craig Burrell, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Navy is Lieutenant Commander Peter Barnes. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that support them. We also acknowledge the members of the RSL and Service Clubs Association and RSL Victoria who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony around Australia. This evening we are also joined by visitors and students who will be laying wreaths on behalf of the following schools. All Saints College, Bathurst, New South Wales and Gwandalan Public School, Gwandalan, New South Wales. Please stand and join in singing the National Anthem. Boys and girls, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families, friends and all Australians could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and other operations over more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Sergeant Thomas Archibald Peaty. Thomas Peaty was born in Auckland, New Zealand, but moved with his family to Ballarat as a child. He completed a five-year apprenticeship there to become a pastry cook and was an active member of his community, being well known in the YMCA, the Neal Street Methodist Church, the Druids Lodge and the local rowing club. He enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force in July 1915 at the age of 23 and left Australia with reinforcements to the 8th Battalion. Petey spent time training in Egypt and France with the 8th and the 58th Battalions. In July 1916, he transferred to the 15th Australian Light Trench Mortar Battery. These muzzle-loaded weapons fired bombs a short distance over on a high trajectory and were an important part of their firepower available on the Western Front in the First World War. Petey proved to be an able member of the Trench Mortar Battery and was quickly promoted to Corporal and later to Sergeant. As a non-commissioned officer, he was regularly given the task of leading a section of the battery in the front line. Sergeant Petey was known as someone, quote, characterised by courage and ability in all work that has been entrusted to him, unquote. He showed ongoing exceptional devotion to duty at all times, as well as great bravery and self-control under difficult conditions in the front line. He was a good leader of men and was known for helping the officers in his battery to keep the men together, inspiring them with his cool and cheerful bearing under heavy fire. Aside from one period of leave to England and a short period to recover from a wound to his face, Petey did not leave the battery during the two years he served with them. In mid-1918, Petey's constant good service, in particular his service during the operations at Broodsender Ridge in October 1917, resulted in the award of the Meritorious Service Medal. During this period, the trench mortars were very much in use. The German line was being pushed back faster than it had been at any other time in the war, and mortars were often the first form of heavier firepower to arrive in the newly advanced positions. In late August 1918, Sergeant Petey was in the line with his battery when he was hit in the back and legs by gunfire. It took some time to get this fearless man to a field hospital, and when he finally arrived, his condition was considered serious, with the wounds having turned gangrenous. He died after just a few days in hospital and is buried in France. His name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my right, along with more than 60,000 others from the First World War. This is but one of the many stories of courage and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Sergeant Thomas Archibald Peaty and all of those Australians who have given their lives in the service of their nation. Boys and girls, please stand for the reading of the ode and the playing of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
Lest we forget. Lest we forget. I leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many men lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over, but in Australia they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the last post-ceremony. Thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and good evening. <laughs>